challenge of God's earth. Every week, thousands of people in this world boldly go where no one has gone before. They are followers of Star Trek, a sci-fi program which first made its debut on television in the 60s. But some are more than just fans. As David Ransom reports, for these devotees, their journeys into deep space have a moral and some say religious dimension. For most people, the weekend brings a change of pace and even a sleep in. But for Leanne and Stephen Upton, it's a chance to discover another side of themselves. She, an officer on the Starship Enterprise, and he no less than Admiral Corrupt. Looks good. Have a look. Not too bad. Captain's log, stardate 41153.7. Our destination is planet Deneb 4, beyond which lies the great unexplored mass of the galaxy. Down the ages, humans have looked to the stars in their search for meaning. From childhood, we're told that God lives in heaven and that heaven is somewhere out there. Now, with more people turning away from conventional religions, there are those who are again looking to space for guidance. And they're doing so not through scholarly writings or ancient symbols, but via the television program, Star Trek. Report. Star Trek has millions of fans worldwide. Some are followers with an almost religious zeal. So these trekkers, Star Trek represents 30 years of salvation in a television wilderness. Other devotees have their liturgies, their gospels, their teachings. Trekkers have their Starship Enterprise and a code of behaviour called the Prime Directive. It's very similar to um, uh, Orthodox religions, uh, is where a group of people gather and um, our... Uh, God, you could say, is the uh, U.S. Enterprise. If you do die, please act it out. Flop to the floor. <laughs> In an outer Sydney suburb, these trekkers, members of a self-styled United Federation of Planets, meet once a month to take on the personalities of Star Trek characters and act out space adventures of their own creation. No one lean back in their seats. Come on, guys, engage! Right. We're a role-playing group. Whereas the other ones are fan clubs and like they know um, who the actors are behind the characters on the screen. Whereas we're more interested in actually living Star Trek as if it was here today. Um, people can't go out into space and trip around the planets. So we give them an environment where hopefully they can simulate that in their mind. Anyone coming here this afternoon may well think they're being introduced to some pretty weird people. Yeah. I hope they do. Yes, I think they would. Not well, everyone sits is willing to give things a go and to like enjoy themselves i mean this is what the people here are doing they're going out of their way to enjoy themselves and help other people enjoy themselves to many people of course star trek is nothing more than just another television program and any adult caught regularly dressed like this puerile in the extreme so what is it about star trek that the some give it almost religious qualities Captain, you do have the might to force the crystals from us, of course, but we won't. When Gene Rodenberry wrote the original Star Trek in 1966, he set out to create a very different vision of the world. Not only was it technically light years ahead, humans had developed a whole new regard for each other. Racism and prejudice no longer existed. The planet had advanced to a stage where there was no poverty, no pollution, and no disease. The Starship Enterprise could probe the universe, but must never interfere in the lives of others. An attraction explained by Star Trek's Captain Picard, actor Patrick Stewart, on a recent visit to Australia. It has something of a certain religious quality in that it is saying this life may not be so good, there is a better one. And in this case, unlike perhaps what might be experienced in religion, we can make it happen now. Four television series and seven films later, 
the cinema lines of Star Trek disciples are longer than ever. This enthusiasm has caused Star Trek fans some ridicule. Actor William Shatner, who plays Captain Kirk, provoked outrage among fans when he suggested publicly that they should get a life. The reality is that Star Trek fans are a most varied species. Some are just normal people. Uh, Till is four, uh, Scotty, two to bend down. Where are we? Beam us up, Scotty. I do remember Gene talking about um, any society's need for a mythology. Um, something mysterious and bigger and inexplicable beyond them. He felt that, that whereas often in previous times people had looked to the past, that suddenly everything had turned around and they were looking to the future for their dream world. Okay. Make, make an engineering roll. For the Trekker, this dream becomes a reality, for a while at least. Space missions grow out of nothing more than group imagination. The experience develops in Trekkers a special knowledge, which in turn creates confidence and a means of self-expression. Does the scanning for life forms? It's a nice way of living. It's uh, non-invasive. There's a respect for different cultures. There's a respect for different life forms. And it's something that the world should perhaps aspire to in years to come, rather than uh, the violence that has gone on in the past. Shane Anderson is the Vice Flag Admiral and is responsible for coordinating these meetings. A former Salvation Army member and Billy Graham Crusade helper, Shane says Star Trek values sit comfortably with his Christian beliefs. It almost seems to be a religious zeal. Uh, yes, I suppose uh, in many ways it is. Um, we, we, uh, in, in, in Christianity, uh, we'd like to think that we look for the positives of life and we look to, to God uh, for our inspiration. We look to Jesus Christ uh, for, uh, uh, for our help and guidance through the day. Um, one wonders, of course, what happens in the 24th century. Uh, what, what would they believe in? Um, they seem to have their act together when it comes to, to conflicts and there is very little... Um, uh, there's very little um, cross-reference to God uh, and religions, even though in many episodes every single alien seems to have their own religious rites uh, and ceremonies and rituals and so forth. So is it a morality without a God? Um, yes, I think so. It is extraordinary the way that, um, uh, that uh, Gene Roddenberry's... Um, who is the uh, creator of Star Trek? Um, the what, what he he sees as um, what he wanted to uh, achieve, he achieved, but he didn't realise that there are people out there who can see his vision becoming a reality, and eventually, you know, many, many, many years away, it will become a reality. You sure of that? Oh, positive. Instead of learning from the past, Trekkers are attempting to learn from the future. And they're not prepared to dismiss as junk this particular space odyssey just because it was made for television. Right or wrong, Trekkers have been at the cutting edge of interactive television. And in that way, at least, they have helped blaze a trail to the future. Energize. And we're confident David will be back in one piece as soon as we fix the transporter module.